All right, I think we'll get started. Uh, football team told me they have captain's practice, is that right? And I guess uh, I won't take long with this. I just want to go over everything, um, go over the rules, and just some things you guys need to know. So thank you. Uh, this is a great crowd. Would you agree, Mr. Strand? Yeah, okay. So let's get started here. Uh, training services. So uh, if your son or daughter um, participates in activities and gets hurt, uh, probably will go see Shane, Shane Siegler. He is an athletic trainer through Essentia Health. Uh, they sign up, see him eighth hour, uh, 2.40 or after school. Uh, and Shane's awesome. I think everybody uh, would agree. Okay, some coaching changes for this year. Uh, new coaches, people that have moved around. JV Volleyball, that's going to be uh, Kaylee Strand. C-Team Volleyball is going to be Janet Rasmussen. Eighth grade Volleyball is going to be Carrie Martinson. Seventh grade Volleyball will be Ali Honrud. Uh, and with cross country being added, we have two new coaches there. Uh, Carolyn Rotz will be the head coach. And then my wonderful wife will be the assistant cross country coach. So uh, positions yet to be filled, both uh, junior high boys basketball positions. So if anybody is interested, uh, let me know. All right, information. So we had something recently shared on Facebook, and I've it would be a hundred and something people, I think, and pretty close are to it, have signed up already. And it's just, it's a quick Google form telling me your name, grade, uh, what activity you're going to do this fall. And what that does, that allows me to get these preliminary rosters uh, started and sent out to the coaches. And a lot of the coaches know who's going to play, uh, but there's always people we don't, aren't aware of. And this helps us get ahead because we're going to have to do those forms and everything. Um, activity handbook. So that is online, uh, it's and you need to sign the handbook form. Basically, the form states you look through the handbook, you read it, you understand what's in it. Uh, the second form that's important, that's our Minnesota State High School League form. Uh, and with that, that's only 9 through 12. But if you have a 7th and 8th grader that is going to play up, so I'm talking 9th grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, or 12th grade uh, team, they need to have that signed as well. And the important pages are three pages, page 10, 11, and 12. So when you print that, it's like obviously 12 pages long. I'm focusing on 10, 11, and 12. Your physical forms, uh, every three years. So we get them when they come into seventh grade, and then we get them again when they're going into their sophomore year. Uh, can't practice or play if you don't have one. Uh, and on the prelim preliminary rosters, the coaches know. I highlight it in yellow uh, if your physical is expired or you don't have one. So. We sent that notice out in the spring. Uh, you should have got it if you um, were due. And if you're not sure, shoot me an email, stop by my office. All I have to do is pull it up on my computer. So, Okay, medical authorization form. That's your medical insurance. That's the third one that we need. Um, so to review, activity handbook form, your Minnesota State High School League form, and then your medical authorization form. And that is for everybody uh, grades 7 through 12. All these forms can be found online. Uh, I'll talk about that, I think, in the next slide. Email them to me. A lot of you have given me a pile here tonight. Uh, you can bring them to Missy uh, in the high school office. It doesn't matter as long as it gets to me. So, All right, information um, on our website. If you go on main page on the quick links on the right side, you'll see our activities calendar. And this is a nice tool. So I'm just looking at Nick Rabadu here. <coughs> Excuse me. So if his mom wanted, hey, I just want the football schedule, I want to get notifications on that. You can customize that um, right there with following those steps. Um, and if you, like I said, just go to quick links on the bottom right, and you will actually see this letter B information. It's on there. So you guys can follow that. And I'm sure, does anybody do that? Sign up for it. Some people do. Thank you. Yep, so good. <coughs> All right, so payment and student handbook highlights. So if we're going to participate, right, there's going to be a fee. So 7th and 8th graders, we're looking at $50 per activity. Uh, 9th through 12th graders, uh, $75 per activity. And then underneath there, change of pace, jazz band, knowledge bowl, musical, uh, and now eSports, uh, $50. Uh, I know last year, Mr. Strand quizzed me during this and asked me about if, uh, I'll just look at Colin Morey. So if Colin Morey this fall is going to play football and run cross country, does he have to pay the 75 for both? And the answer is yes until you would reach that max. So let's talk about the next part, the student max. Uh, if you're a ninth through 12th grader, the student max for you will cap out at $200. If you're a junior high student, 7th uh, and 8th, there is no student max. But there is a family max. 
So looking, thinking of a family. So maybe major, right, in Ava Ness, you might hit that family max this year at some point. So $350 for that. You can give that fee to your coach, supervisor. Uh, Missy in the office is really good at taking that as well. And then we use RevTrack online to pay for that. And then you need to pay that before the first event, otherwise you will not participate. And we always have those, um, the day of the game, mom coming in, writing the check, or mom making that rev track payment at about noon that day. So let's try to avoid that. All right, activity prices. So to get into our home events, uh, and Missy and Amber were out there selling. Uh, hopefully you bought some season passes. But if you don't have a season pass, it's going to cost you $6 for adults, $4 for students, and then senior citizens, uh, 65 and over, get in free. Uh, your season passes were $55 for adults, $35 for students, and then um, obviously senior citizens don't need one. But for music concerts, we do not charge. You sure you're going sure to have practice? <coughs> Parents and students, so some highlights out of this handbook. Uh, you know, student expectations, right? There's always expectations for anything you do. Uh, in the locker room, use locks. Obviously, there's no cameras in there. So if you bring valuables in, and you don't put a lock on it, right? It, we, there's nothing stopping somebody from taking them. Uh, take care of your locker area, keep other schools' locker rooms clean as well. So when we travel, let's be respectful, right? Let's take care of it like it's our own. Uh, behave on the bus while riding to and from events, right? And that's what the coaches are on there for. Uh, students are expected to take the school-provided transportation. Parents must make personal contact with the supervisor or coach if they are not. So if something comes up, which it always does, just make sure your mom or dad is talking to the coach saying, hey, can I take them? You know, a lot of times, if it's far a trip, maybe your house is on the way home. Makes sense. You don't need to come all the way into school. You can just bring them home. Uh, some goals here, some important things. Grades 7th and 8th, our participation is our primary goal. Uh, grades 9 through 12, we know that playing time is not guaranteed. Student expectations continued here. School attendance. Uh, regular attendance for the entire school day is mandatory on the day of an event. Uh, th this can affect elig eligibility for games and or practice. Exception. Emergency situations. Things come up. Um, coming late to school due to an illness, though, does not qualify. Um, if you have a prearranged appointment, which doctors, dentists, you name it, let the office know. Mr. Shelley is going to say, I need a slip. Show me the slip. Right? So get a slip from your doctor. Uh, and you need a note, obviously, but tanning, getting nails done, or a haircut does not count, and that's like a springtime thing, right? There's something called prom, so I, I've dealt with that personally. Um, come back to school ASAP after your appointment. Don't use a morning appointment to miss the whole morning and part of the afternoon, right? Probably on that thing, it says what time your appointment was. Academic eligibility. We are... Um, Student athletes, right? Not athlete students, which means we are a student before we are an athlete or student, anything you participate in. Uh, grade checks are done at the third week and sixth week and at the end of the quarter. Um, this is explained fully in that activity handbook. There's a lot of detail with this, but basically your three week and six week, uh, Mr. Strand uh, will pull grades on Wednesday uh, at the end of the day, and then if your son or daughter's on there uh, for a class is failing, they have the a week until that next Wednesday to get it up. And then if they're not uh, passing, they will be ineligible until they are passing. Uh, failing grades at the end of the quarter in our handbook, there's a guideline for depending what sports you're in or what activity and the duration and how many games you play, uh, that number um, differs. So if you have uh, more games like basketball, uh, you will sit more games. If you have a shorter season like uh, football, only eight regular season games, your penalty will be less. It's just sort of based off how many games you play. Lettering. So this is set up by the coach or supervisor or um, whoever is in charge of that activity. Uh, it's communicated to the athletes and parents. Uh, students who are in violation, though, of a Minnesota State High School League rule, they forfeit all letters, team awards, and conference awards in that activity. Okay, dealing with conflict. Uh, we don't live in a perfect world. Conflict's going to come up, whether that's parent and coach, whether that's a player and coach, but there's appropriate time and place. Uh, immediate, immediately following a contest, that's not when we want our parents, right? We don't want our parents at all going up to a coach after the game because 
we're all heated, right? We all need time to maybe step back, look at it, and relax a little bit. Uh, violations are outlined in the handbook for, you know, when these conflicts take place. And then this last one, handling conflict. So I'm referring to if your son or daughter has an issue, let's say, with how much they're playing. Okay, the first step is your son or daughter asking the coach to meet and then having a conversation about that. If that doesn't work, the second step would be son or daughter, you as a parent, and the coach. Third step would be me getting involved with the coach, with the athlete, and with the parent. That is the correct order. So I know there's parents, I, I've, I've seen it. If as much as mad as you may be, it's your son or daughter's responsibility, step one, to go talk to the coach. And my office door is always open. You can call me on my phone. We can talk. All right, the Minnesota State High School League form. Uh, all rules for this, so this is signed and returned, and this is important. All students participating at the ninth grade levels are higher in both athletics and fine arts. So our one act play, you name it. I mean, there's many different examples of fine arts. We have art, visual art in the spring, but all rules apply for one year. So this is good, this form is good for 12 months. Um, there's concussion information in it. Please read that because we know concussions are very, uh, um, you know, they're a big deal nowadays, right? We need to be aware of everything that comes with that. Uh, there are, there's one side that's the eligibility side. Please make sure athlete signs it in parent. I get the form a lot. Uh, and maybe just one or the other signs and not both. Uh, and by signing that, you're going to state that you acknowledge receiving this brochure, you have read it, and you understand it. If there's something in there you don't understand, ask me. And then if I can't answer that, I'll ask the Minnesota State High School League. Uh, the health questionnaire. So that's page 12 in the Minnesota State High School League form. Uh, I get a lot that are emailed to me. And what's missing? Page 12. They send 10 and 11, but page 12 is your health questionnaire. So two things this does. It notes any health concerns that may be important for your coach uh, or your advisor to know, and it's clearing your son or daughter for participation. So don't forget page 12. All right, general eligibility, code of responsibility. Uh, violation of the code of conduct, which we deal with a lot, will result in a student being ineligible for a period of time as determined by the high school principal. In, in school or out of school suspensions, there's no participation on the days that the suspension takes place. I think that makes uh, total sense. Uh, number two, mood altering chemicals. So we're talking alcohol, tobacco, drugs, or any product used to induce intoxication. Okay, the high school league penalties, it's listed on the form, but first offense, you're looking at two weeks or two events, whichever's greater. So you might have four basketball games in a two week span, so you're missing four basketball games. Um, second, three weeks or six events. Okay, and the third offense, you're looking at four weeks or 12 events, and then any subsequent violations after that, you're looking at 18 weeks or one semester. But we have our own policy here too, and our Barnesville's policy, it, the consequences are stronger. So if your first offense, we're gonna add an additional two weeks. But this can be reduced uh, to the high school league penalty if the athlete agrees to take part in a chemical counseling program that's approved by the school. The school used to offer that, uh, we no longer do, so you would have to go to uh, an outside agency there to get that. Uh, and then if it's your second offense, you can add an additional three weeks. If it's your third, you can add an additional four weeks. And then penalties are cumulative beginning with students' first participation in league activity. So you might be in basketball, and that might carry over into baseball, might carry over into softball, things like that. So it, it accumulates and keeps going. All right, serving a penalty uh, must be in good standing to serve a penalty. So let's say you actually have two Fs. You actually are going to serve the two Fs first, then you will serve your Minnesota State High School League penalty. Okay, so there it is. If they're academically ineligible and then receive a chemical violation, you don't serve that until you're done with your um, academic one. Category two, so all other school-sponsored activities which may or may not be sponsored by the high school league uh, such as knowledgeable, esports, FCCLA, school musicals, one act, FFA, our scheduled dances, so prom, homecoming, snowball, and homecoming court, snowball court, that's all affected too. Okay, so you might get on homecoming court, but you get a violation the week before, well, you can't be on homecoming court anymore. That's part of that as well. Um, but yeah, so consequences are listed for all those in the handbook. Okay, a couple things. Um, 
So last year I talked about uh, 18 units strong. That's basically what, in a nutshell, I'm, I'm overseen or in charge of. Uh, and this year we made it 20 because we added cross country and we uh, added eSports last year too. So I'll, I'll get to what that means. But for me, this, this is my core beliefs and this is what I'll talk about when I talk with coaches. Okay, the power of the unit, max effort, your competitive attitude, and then meaningfulness. I'm gonna get into this a little bit. Okay, team. Um, and that's my acronym, right? So it's to, uh, T is togetherness. That's just commitment to each other and to the work necessary to achieve our purpose. We will work together and not against each other. So, right, we have football team supporting the musical, right? We got volleyball supporting the wrestling team. It's just, you get what I'm saying? We're supporting each other. We're not against each other, right? We're for each other. Max effort, okay? We expect players and coaches and anybody that's involved to be, you know, go as fast as you can from point A to point B. In other words, be relentless. Okay, they're gonna give their best effort in everything they do. Okay, if you're showing up and not giving everything you have, why are you there, right? Competitive attitude. Okay, that's the mindset of a winner. Constant focus on mental reps and game reps. Competing in everything you do. Okay, positive attitudes only. Uh, in my classroom, I used to have this, this poster. It says, attitudes are contagious. Is yours worth catching, right? We all have good days and bad days. And when you have a bad attitude, think about it. Do you want someone else to have that attitude? It's a good question. Okay, meaningful. Everything you do and say is meaningful towards our goals and purpose, right? Okay, so think about it. Football team, let's just look back last year, right? Just a quick example. Your goal was to win state. Okay, everything you guys did, volleyball, your goal, right? Win the section, get to state, win the state, right? Everything you guys do, even the musical, right? Everything you guys do, every single day, it's meaningful towards your goal. You want to do your best, so don't take a day off, right? Everything coaches and players do should have a purpose. Um, being 20 units strong will not only make you better, but it's also gonna make Barnesville activities as a whole better. Um, think about that, right? When we're all for each other, we want what's best for Barnesville. That's ultimately what it comes down to, okay? Uh, this might be my favorite slide, okay? We, not me, and that, that's as simple. What type of player are you? Are you a we player or are you a me player? I think that explains it, right? We, you're about the team, doing whatever it takes. Me, you're more worried about your individual statistics. You're more worried about your individual performance. The we will outweigh the me, okay? And that's when great things are gonna happen. A couple reminders. Okay, volleyball for grades nine through 12. You guys are gonna start uh, next Monday, August 14th. And I know she sent this out, but any eighth grade players who are wanting to try out for a sub varsity team are invited to attend the preseason practice for the first week. Teams will be announced on that Wednesday evening, and this is optional for all, for all eighth graders. And that is gonna be eight to 11 uh, over here in the high school BSA and middle gyms. Football, grades nine through 12. You guys start Monday, August 14th as well. Uh, eight to uh, 12, you're gonna start here at the high school, and we'll work your way to the fairgrounds at some point. Cross country, uh, that's gonna be grades seven through 12. Uh, your practice is gonna be in Monday, Oh, that's wrong, okay, oops. That should say August 14th. Sorry, Liz, sorry, Carolyn. Uh, three to five, so you guys start next Monday as well. Um, I think the seventh grade thing threw me off for the August 28th. So, but seven through 12 cross country next Monday. Uh, seventh and eighth grade football. You guys are gonna begin Monday, August 28th. Uh, I put time four to six, but I think that's flexible. Um, Mr. Hintz and Mr. Amundsen and Mr. Parr. Uh, there will be equipment handout at the high school locker room. You guys will meet there, go over practices, is that right? Yep, schedule, yep. And happy birthday, by the way, Mr. Amundsen. If you guys haven't seen him yet, make sure you wish him happy birthday. Uh, seventh and eighth grade volleyball. Uh, that begins Monday, August 28th as well, uh, four to six, and that's gonna be at the elementary gym. Okay, some other reminders. Home games, okay, this year it's gonna be different. Uh, we are actually gonna stream and uh, or be broadcasted to our YouTube page. Mr. Nibby's up there, he'll be helping me with this, using Huddle. Um, we have our Huddle Focus camera put up in uh, the BSA right now. You may see it when you're in there. We're gonna have one at the football field as well. And this is also gonna allow us to, any seventh grade, eighth grade, uh, ninth grade JV football game played on that field, I'm even talking FM. We can stream it now, okay? Over here, anything that's in the BSA, we can stream. But with this huddle as well, we can take an iPad, we can do any game in the middle gym if we use the old gym, and we can stream it from there onto our YouTube as well. So we now have the capabilities of streaming anything that we do. 
which is going to be awesome because it'll just it promote our product. Uh, home game entrances. We have the main door, um, which you guys came in over by the high school office. We have the pack door, which is right out here. And then a lot of times we use that old, I call it the old wrestling room door. I don't actually think it's nine. I don't even know what number it is, but I call it old wrestling room door because I think I'm stuck on the old numbers. Reminders. Athletes and parents, uh, you need to sign the attendance sheet out there. All this does, it just tells me, hey, you were here, and you don't have to watch this because now you know what you need to do, right? Now you know what forms. You know when you start. Um, become members of the Booster Club if you haven't done so already. Uh, it's amazing what they do, right, for any program. You name it. It's not just sports. It's, it's the fine arts. They help out anybody. Uh, looking, no, this one. I'm looking for parent volunteers for Chains Crew. So I'm talking all home, 7th, 8th, 9th, and JV games. Uh, if interested, please let me know. Uh, I would, I know I just saw him walk out, but uh, Matt Walters would tell me it's the best seat in the house. Right, so if you're a dad and you want to help out with the chains crew, you're on the sideline, you're right by the action. So if interested, please uh, talk to me or maybe one of the junior high football coaches as well. Uh, Instagram, please go follow me. I like to you know, do fun stuff with that, uh, promote the kids, promote the programs, um, and throw anything out there. Uh, and then lastly, just you know, thank you for coming. This is, when we set out to do this, this, this is sort of the crowd we were uh, hoping for, right? And this is what we want because now we've gotten almost not everybody, but a, a good majority of our student population here, that if they're involved in anything, it's there, right? So thank you for coming. Sounds like it's done raining. Um, have a safe trip home.